Hello, my name is Ana Cecilia Gonzalez. I'm originally from Monterrey, Mexico. I was born in 1964 in a time where medicine was not what I needed when I was born. I was born with a very serious, serious heart condition. That meant at that time that life was not compatible. I was not available, according to doctors, to live for a long time. So what happened to me, I had an amazing near death experience when I was around 45 years old. I was with very little oxygen. I was probably with a, about 70% oxygenation most of the time. So in many moments, I nearly passed out because my body couldn't warm up by itself when I was, was at the pool. And, and I had many experiences as a child that I now understand that made me see life very different since I was a little girl. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about when I was probably seven or eight years old, I was so tired of going to the doctor because I just was didn't understand why is it that was me and not my siblings. I was always constantly going. And back then, they didn't really tell you a lot like they do now. So one day, I just got to my parents. And I said, you know, I'm sick and tired of coming to your doctor. I don't want to come anymore. So in that moment, my parents told me, you know, you're sick. They explained to me how serious I, it was and, and that they didn't know for how long was I going to be okay. So without saying it, I understood that I was going to die. I understood that my life was probably short. And then I also understood. Why is it that I was constantly seeing this character that I didn't understand what it was? I call them a ghost. But every time when I was in danger, I remember seeing this being beside me. And I even gave him a name. I called him Rafa. Why? Because in Spanish, you could say Rafael for a man and Rafaela for a woman. But I decided to call it like a middle name, Rafa. So at that moment when my parents were talking to me, I understood that I might die. But I remember my dad saying something. You know, this is a prognosis, this is diagnosis, but what if God has another plan? That little thought of doubt got in my heart and I said, well, yes, and what if? My parents, I really appreciate and I thank them that they never avoided me to dream about my future. I didn't know how I was going to get there, but I had already seen it and I saw it in my, in the spiritual mind. I saw myself as a grown up with a family, with a college degree, with everything I'm telling you. No surgery available for me at that time. There was nothing that they could offer. They were just hoping for me to grow up until there was something for me to be done. So when I was 15, nobody understood how I was still living and living basically a normal life. But I remember for the first time I had endocarditis. So I ended up in the hospital. I had to go to Houston, Texas, because Mexico, they, they offered nothing for me. Neither the United States, but by that time, they were starting to have something that maybe could help my heart. But I remember doctors telling me, you know, you need to hang in there because maybe in 10 more years, just imagine, 10 more years, we might have something. So by then I couldn't tell doctors all of the experiences I had been going through. For example, when I was a little girl, when I came out of the, of the pool, I remember very well that I, I was shivering so hard and so difficult getting air and getting warm in my body. But I remember being on the ground in a very hot, or trying to warm myself up just around family and everything. And I remember coming out of my body completely and looking at everybody around. I didn't understand where I was. I couldn't tell this to anybody. I can tell it to you now because it's clear to me I was having an out of body experience. And I saw my families, my siblings, everybody there. And suddenly my father came running because he knew I was having a hard time. And the moment he came and hugged me, I remember coming back to my body. So nobody knew I was going through a hypothermia and maybe almost even dying. But I remember having these events several times in my life. So back then, I couldn't understand what was happening. But finally, I had a boyfriend. I got married. And miraculously, I had a beautiful daughter. So you see all of these processes that how could this be? Of course, Raffle was always there. And I didn't understand what was it. If it was my imagination. Even when I was more than 20, she was born when I was 23. And just the first she was born is when my heart finally had to be taken care of. So it was not 10 years after 
His doctors told me, just hang in there for 10 more years. It was nine years. I went back to Houston because I was having a very hard time breathing. My daughter was by then nine months old. So when I got here uh, to the United States to Houston, I remember the first thing doctor, when they were checking me, they said, well, but we see you have a sick section. How did you dare have a baby? They just couldn't believe their eyes. They said, this woman is just doesn't know what she's been going through. In that moment, I understood that it was really a miracle for me to be alive myself. So that's where my real story started. I understood there that it was an absolute miracle all my life up to that point. But I was there for a reason. I was that point when they said, you know, one year ago we started doing something with your heart condition patients. But we've only had surgery with children with three or four years old, never with an adult. But this is what you need. You need a surgery urgently. We're going to do a, this kind of surgery on you. Do you agree? And then when they found out I had a baby, they said, well, it's not. A, we're not only need to save the life of this woman, but also the mother of this little baby. So it was like more complex situation they were encountering there. But I went into this uh, open heart surgery for the first time in my life when I was 24. Nobody believed their eyes. I was in such a good condition in spite of whatever I had gone through. But the surgery went well, but of course with a lot of complications. After the surgery, I came back, but then things got complicated. There was a lot of liquid around my lungs. So suddenly, oxygenation started dropping. I was already in the room by then, so they had to bring me back to intensive care. And they found out that there was a, all of my lungs, my heart, and they needed to get it out for me not to go into another surgery. So they took me to this place, and then they were trying to do the third trying with, with a needle, trying to get all the fluid out. When they were trying to do that, they accidentally punched, they pinched my heart. So my heart was bleeding. And then I did need to go urgently to surgery. But in that time, I recall that after many years, I saw Rafael again. In that, before I went there, I understood that it was serious. So I remember my family coming. Everybody, you know, you start signing papers. You don't even know what you're signing. But you need to sign consent. My husband signed the consent. My parents came and they called everybody, please come. This is surgery, we need to go into a surgery. Say goodbye to your brother. So they called him all in. I said, I talked to them and I said, I'll see you later. But my mother was crying. My husband was with, with an office, like, what's happening now? And in that moment, I understood that I might die. So I remember talking to God and saying, you know, I understand this is serious. If this is my time, it's okay. I'm ready. Just please, I just beg you, take care of my daughter. Take care of my husband and my parents. If there's a chance I have to see my daughter again, please let me see her again. And that moment is when Rafael appears. And I, the first words I remember saying, oh, long time no see. Everything is telepathic, you know. You're, you're just talking to these beings there with, without uh, needing words. But I knew I was talking to him. And I said, Rafael, please, please, if there's a way I can see my daughter again. That's the only thing I want. I just want to see her again. Because it had already been more than a month without seeing her. Please give me a chance to see Anna Paula again. So finally, I went into the operating room. They take care of my clothes off. Everything was so aggressive because it was an emergency, you know. So they tied my hands and they put some gas and some oxygen on my face. And the last thing I remember is Anna Paula, my daughter's name. So when I came back with that surgery, I remember very well that I was sort of awake, but two nurses were supposed to take care of me. So I knew I was alive, I was in this world, but I was in a very critical situation. So I remember very well one of the nurses coming to me saying, I'll be back and I'm going to go and see my boyfriend at McDonald's downstairs. And then the other nurse who was supposed to be there in intensive care with me, she said, okay, so I'll be back. I'll just get a little bit of water and I'll be back, sip of water. In that exact moment, I suddenly had respiratory arrest and then a heart arrest after some time. So I was connected. I was intubated. There was this big noise that starts sounding like, like an ambulance inside a room because there was no oxygen getting in my body. So suddenly everybody starts coming in, the respiratory team, they start shouting. And I just remember struggling because my hands were tied to my bed for me not to get a tube away. I was tied there. I remember uh, moving my legs. I was just kicking hard just to try to get air into my lungs. I couldn't do it. I, I tried and suddenly I just left. So I remember seeing myself coming out of that body and looking at all the doctors around my table. And they were trying to bring oxygen back to me. But in that moment, I just turned around someplace else. 
for some people it's like a tunnel for me it was like if i enter into this this uh, tree and i was in inside it floating but it, it's not that i didn't know that was happening to my body but you know you center your awareness my concentration was completely to this looking at this beautiful and amazing experience i was experimenting something that i was being aware of everything around me so i centered my attention to different things my awareness never forgot that i was my body was traveling but also i started looking my i centered my awareness to this experience so i was floating and suddenly i see little animals rabbits beautiful dogs all of these little beautiful animal in them and i was just looking at them in such an with different colors. The colors were so brilliant. It was so beautiful looking at this scenery. I was just floating. I couldn't control all of this. I was just being an expectator of all this beauty. So I kept on floating and then I see bigger animals. And so a giraffe, a tiger, a lion, all of these beautiful, and I even had a chance like to caress them. I could even connect with them with my eyes. Since then, my respect for animal kingdom for everything is, has changed up to and this means that I know that we're all here for a reason. And the fact that we're part of this whole kingdom is for us to respect each other. And I felt so much love for these animals. It's like if they were part of me, I didn't feel disconnected from any of them out of all the way around. I kept on floating and then I saw children, little children, babies running all around. It was all this scenery was like if it was like if you were in a forest, it, everything was nature. I could see trees, rivers, lakes, waterfalls, your birds all the time. And some people have asked me, so how far could you look in these branches? It was infinite. I couldn't see an ending on this, but I knew it was like branches with different levels. So I started to understand that there were different levels of awareness. And then I kept on floating. And then I saw people around my age. And there were lots of people that I've never met them. But it was like if it was family for me. That I was feeling welcomed by all of them. And I felt so much love like if they were, okay, welcome home. And I could speak to them just with my brain. I, I didn't need to talk, but I knew they were talking, welcoming me. And I saw different groups of people gathering together. Like if some of them were just enjoying, some of them were like having classes, schooling. But it was this magnificent scenery. All of these people that brought me so much peace. There was so much peace with this. Remember that I told you that the only thing I thought, I want to see my daughter again. So when this was happening, I could turn around and then I center my awareness to the world, to my world. And then I saw my parents. There was no way I could know this. I was saw my parents praying a rosary in the waiting room because they were so worried because they knew I, I was going through something very difficult. And then I saw my husband that was running up and down the stairs of the building. How could I know that? And I saw him just being so stressed. He was about a 24 level floor building and he was just going up the stairs. And then on the other hand, I saw my siblings, where one of them was at work, the other one was at home. And then I centered my attention and I saw my dog. I finally saw her. She was with my aunt Martha. Somebody had taken her there and she was taking care of her. And I saw her the way she was dressed. I saw her playing in a crib. And I said, she's okay. But the first time in my life, I understood what detachment was about. I didn't need to hold her, to touch her, to know that she was okay. I asked to see her, and I saw her. And my heart was happy, and my heart was filled with love for her. And I said, she's okay. She's going to be okay. There was no attachment like meeting, oh, but I need to go back and take care of her. No, it was suddenly I felt completely free. From the attachment to people, to things, even to my own daughter. So as I tell you, everything was happening at the same time. It's not that it was different moments. Everything was happening. I doctors were doing this on my body. My parents were praying. My my siblings were doing that. And my daughter was being taken care of. And I was enjoying the scenery. So suddenly I centered my attention back to this beautiful experience. So I kept on floating and suddenly I saw older people. But I understood that it was not old in age. It was probably in knowledge. In, Instead of awareness, I saw that this was wise people. They were like the masters. I got information from them that was so wise. They turned around and see me with a smile of welcoming me there. But I could hear other conversations, but it's like they were not talking precisely to me, but I, I could connect with those things only by 
with my head. So another thing is like, how was my body? I don't know if I had a body. I just knew it was a spirit body. And it was full. I was complete. I didn't need anything else. I knew it was me. So when I saw these beings, these masters, these beautiful, very elevated souls, that's what I think they were. I kept on floating and suddenly I look up and there was a, like this big circle, uh, yellow, pale yellow. And I just wanted to enter there. I was just floating, but there was this need to get in there. And in the moment I started getting into this, this beautiful light, an amazing, brilliant light embraces me completely. I felt an embracement of love, full of light. It's like all of this light embraced me with these beautiful arms. And I, the only thing I remember there was, this is the purest love I've ever felt in my life. And one day I really want to go back and feel that again. So by then, in that moment, I remember feeling a hand on my head. And I couldn't see anything. But I felt and I hear this voice in my head saying, stay calm and go in peace. This is not your time. And you do everything I've told. In that same second, I started returning through all of these levels. And I just told you very, very fast. It was like I was swirling all around and around. And I felt the moment I came back to my body. And I hear this. This is true. What doctors, you see, we see this in movies that uh, all these electronics start like beep, beep, beep. Well, it is true. I started listening to this and doctors shouting, she's back, she's back. And I remember feeling these electric shocks in my body, all this warm. It was burning my chest. And I remember going in circles, circles, circles because of the lack of oxygen. It was several minutes I was out and then they brought me back. But you know, the first thing I felt, my first sensation was, what are these doctors doing? I didn't know I was dying. So I said, I'm finally sleeping and they want to wake me up. They're so selfish. They're so selfish. I was very, very upset. I didn't want to go back. And I remember them shouting, we're losing her again. We're losing her. What I wanted without even understanding, I just wanted to go back to that place. I wanted to go and continue experiencing that amazing. And I wanted to talk with all these beings. I wanted to get more information. I just wanted to get back there and explain to me what is it that you told me. I wanted to detail everything. I wanted to go back. So I was told by a doctor a year later after I tried to investigate everything that happened that night that they took more than half an hour to stabilize me because I went into a heart arrest several times because I was really trying to go back. I didn't know that I was dying. But my soul, my spirit just wanted to go back there. But I had not listened well when I said, this is not your time. Do everything I've told you. So when I finally got stable, there was a doctor that was there all the whole night with me. Because my heart was very unstable. I was really in a very critical condition. It resulted that all the fluid in my lungs and inside and out around the heart, it was filled of tremendous infection. So next morning... They told my parents and my husband and everybody that this was a very serious infection, that if they didn't get the required antibiotics, three options, and if they didn't do it on time, it was already all around my blood. So they told them, please get your paperwork ready. So next morning, they woke me up a little bit and everybody was around me. I saw a very sad faces. And then I remember the doctor telling me, Hey, Anna, uh, how are you feeling? They wanted to understand how I was. All of this lack of oxygen had affected. So I, I turned and did like this, like, uh, very well. I mean, I'm strong. So the doctors at that moment, they thought, you know, I think this affected her brain. Because she's saying that she's just doing fine and strong and she's smiling. And I think she, that there's something wrong with her brain. Well, now we know that it wasn't that. So finally, I was in intensive care for several weeks in a very serious condition. I knew that I was going to leave, but my body was so weak that everybody was really doubting it. I was still in intensive care for about another month. And finally, I, 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 when I was uh, extubated, I tried to tell first my sister and then my husband, and I tried to tell people what I had gone through, but it was like nobody listened, nobody understood, nobody was really well, you're, you're very you're a very serious condition. I mean, what are you talking about? But it was difficult because we, everything told the doctors that my condition was not going to be recovering. I had gone through that. Nobody was listening to me. I remember one night that I was really very upset. I was sad. I was 
tired, very tired. And I just wanted to see my daughter. You know, there, there was no cell phones, nothing back then. We're talking about uh, 1989. There was no way but a phone call and, and you had to go and take the cord, you know, all the way to your bed. It was, everything was so different back then. But I remember one day that I was crying. My sister was there with me and I just turned on my eyes to heaven and I said, you know, God, I'm tired. Please, please heal me. Come on, Raffle. I mean, I, I have to get out of here. I'm, I'm just tired. But I was crying so hard that when I started crying, my lungs started filling in with air. But I remember this was one of the most amazing experiences I had up to this. Looking in heaven, and then I saw like one, one beautiful light coming on my right, and another one coming on my left. I believe they were angels. Then I felt I was sobbing, I was really crying, very desperate. And I remember one of them started to clean me, my face, my body. And my sister was there, and suddenly I just started to look at my hands. Okay, so what's happening? And she just looked at me like, because she was expecting that I was crying. But she suddenly saw that I was just turning to see everything around me. And I saw how they were cleaning me. And they were, one of them was on my right, and another one was on my left. They cleaned me completely, and I went into a very deep sleep. Well, next morning, my sister left. They were only allowed to be there for an hour, and she had to leave. So when I woke up next morning, very early in the morning, I received a phone call. They said, you know, there's somebody that really needs to talk to you. Are you okay? So they put the phone on my ear, and she says, you know, I had a dream with you. He was a friend I hadn't seen for years and years. I had a dream about you last night, and I dreamt that two angels came and healed you, and they heal you completely and you're going to be out of the hospital soon. If I would have been able, I would have jumped and said, I, I had this experience last night. Well, to make the story short, a few days later, I was out of intensive care, and five days later, I was out of the hospital. This for me has been probably one of the most amazing experiences I've experienced. And after that, I understood that I was here for a purpose. I was finally able to see my daughter. I was, well, she's now 35 years old. She's a beautiful soul. She's a beautiful being. I adopted a son some years after I went out of my surgery. I had a full, beautiful life. One of the things I can assure you is that my fear for death is completely gone. I'm not afraid of dying all the way around. I, I would love to go back to that day. And I know that there is heaven. There is a beautiful place that we're gonna go later on. But you know, one of the things I learned is that we can connect to that world now. We don't need to have these kind of experiences to be able to connect to the spiritual world. So I learned how to do it. I understood that one of the reasons I was back here is to share with people how to get back home. It's not getting back home to heaven or dying is going back home, which is inside us, getting to really know who we are as human beings. We are amazing, beautiful spiritual beings that have a lot of wisdom inside of ourselves and that we can connect to the spiritual world. Because after all of these events, I started having a lot of dreamings, revelating dreams. I had a lot, of, I started to have a lot of psychic experiences where I could definitely communicate and feel things and know things before they even happened. And in these dreams, I had a lot, not one or two, at least I have a hundred of these dreams written down where I communicated with people that had already passed that gave me very special messages. But what I wanna tell you with all this is that we are definitely beings, all of us are special beings that are in this earth, in this world for a reason. We come here to learn and to make the best out of it. What are we doing with this experience that we are offered is our decision and i believe that we all have a, a very special one so to discover it and to get back home is to go inside and understand what is it that i'm here for i'm convinced that we're all here in this world for a beautiful reason but it's our decision what to make it out of this and i invite you to really appreciate life and enjoy life to the fullest because being alive, being here, it's a beautiful gift. Enjoy it to the fullest. And I hope I've given you a little bit of the many, many gifts that I've received in this beautiful world. Thank you for listening to me. And thank you for having me here. Hey, fellow NDE fans. We have some exciting things coming up on the other side, but we could really use your help and support to keep going with this channel. Our outreach team works around the clock, making sure to bring you the best NDE stories that we can find. 
but now we're looking to expand into other countries to get near-death experiences from around the globe. However, we need your help and support to make this happen. This is why we're introducing our YouTube membership program. Get access to exclusive ad-free episodes that haven't been on YouTube. Watch and participate in live Q&As with the guests. Engage directly with us and NDEers. Participate in giveaways and live events. And most importantly, you will ensure our channel's continuous efforts to seek out and uncover these important experiences worldwide. Support us by hitting the Join Now button below. Thank you for your continued viewership and support. Your help will make a difference, and we look forward to building our community together with you.